16. As you go down the group, the atoms get larger for the halogens, so they will have a longer bond length, and then their strength of the covalent bond will be decreasing. It's easier to break them apart. But molecule to molecule, as you go down the group, because of the increasing number of electrons, they will have a stronger intermolecular attraction, uh, which is also explains why their boiling point increases down the group. So strength of the van der Waals forces increases down the group. Seventeen, manufacture of ammonia. It might be useful for you to remember straight off that a low temperature will have a higher yield and high pressure will have a higher yield. If you can't remember the, the yield, you can write out the equation, equilibrium, remembering it's exothermic, and then understand that low temperature will shift the equilibrium to the right side. High pressure will shift the equilibrium to the side that has less gas molecule, which is also to the right side. So now we know that low temperature and high pressure gives us a higher yield of ammonia. We have to check which one corresponds to the shape. So this one, as we increase the pressure, the yield of ammonia increases and the yield of ammonia is higher when temperature is lower so d is the graph 18 we have urea forming and then no other products are formed so whatever atoms were produced must come from the products so we have ammonium as part of the product are part of the reactants already and then we see what else is missing we have one nitrogen still unaccounted for and one carbon and one oxygen okay, so then we tally up we can see that the left side the atoms balances out the right side atoms so NH4 will be plus and the other cyanide will be CNO minus. Nineteen, we have to be clear about the types of catalysts used in the four processes. For A, C, and D, we are using elements. And for contact process, we are using vanadium 5 oxide, which is a compound. 18 and steam, this is a hydration reaction. Two molecules combine to form one single molecule. So it is an addition reaction also. When they combine to form one single substance. 21, what is true of every nucleophile? We have some nucleophiles here. And we can see that they not necessarily have to be negatively charged. We have neutral substances like water and ammonia. But what they must have will be a lone pair of electrons so that they can go and attack partial positive carbons. How many isomers will have C4H8 that involve pi bonding? So I've drawn out a few of them. The structural formulas first. We can have a butene straight chain where the double bonds are on different places and we can have a but uh, butene or propene with a branch of a methyl group. So these are the four, these are the three structural formulas and then if you include stereomers, stereoisomers, isomers, we have to see that this one there's a possibility of it having cis trans isomers. So one, two from the cis trans and one more for this propene straight chain or propene branch so we have a total of four why do they mention involve pi bonding because they do want they do not want you to have this structure okay which is also c4h8 but doesn't have pi bonding we have 
two functional groups here, aldehyde and a ketone. Which one will react with both? We have option C that reacts with both ketones and aldehyde, your hydrogen cyanide. Okay. Dichromate will only react with aldehyde, the one can be oxidized. Same for failing solution. And sodium hydroxide reacts with neither. Twenty-four. How can we convert propanoin ore to two bromopropane? So we start off with propanoin ore, and we want to get the bromine on the second carbon. What we do is we create a double bond first, which is done by elimination. So we use concentrated sulfuric acid, we dehydrate it, we get our double bonds, and then we add HBr. H will come to this carbon, Markovnikov rule. Br will go to the second carbon. Okay, if you eliminate for option A and do bromine, then you get Br across both carbons, which is not what we want. Twenty-five reaction between sodium hydroxide and two bromo two methyl butane. First of all, you must realize that this is a tertiary halogen alkane. So most likely, the nucleophile will not attack the carbon at the same time as the bonds will be broken for the CBr. It should be that the bonds will be broken for the CBr first. So what happens is, two of these electrons, these bonds will be passed to the bromine, giving us a bromine ion and leaving us a carbocation behind. Only after this is formed and then your nucleophile will attack your carbocation. In this case it is your nucleophile is your hydroxide OH minus. So we will have a heterolytic bond breaking, bond fission, and then your nucleophile will attack your carbocation. 26 require a bit of reasoning out. What happens when we react the organic product with oxidizing agent? Do we get a product with lower or higher boiling point? So first of all, we have our alcohol, primary alcohol. It will go to an acid. Both the product and the reactants have hydrogen bonding. And actually, the acid has a stronger hydrogen bond, okay? Because there are two ends where it can undergo hydrogen bonding, so the product actually have a higher boiling point, which is not what we want. Second option is actually a tertiary, tertiary alcohol, so it will not be oxidized. It actually remains unchanged. Pentanol becoming acid, same reason as the first option, hydrogen bonds and stronger hydrogen bonds for the acid, so not for C. Penta 2 or we will have hydrogen bonding, and then when it oxidizes, it becomes ketone, which is permanent dipole, which is a weaker intermolecular attraction. So our product have a lower boiling point. Twenty-seven. Complete combustion of ethanol. We have this equation. I better adjust this. C2H5OH. Carbon is okay. Hydrogen is okay. I have seven oxygen here. I overlooked that there's one oxygen here already. So instead of seven oxygen needed, we actually need six here. So multiply by three. Once we have this, we know that if I have 0 0.1 mole, I will need 0 0.3 moles of oxygen. And understanding that 1 mole of gas will give will occupy 24 dm cube under room temperature pressure, 0 0.3 moles of gas will occupy 0 0.3 multiplied by 24, which will give us 
Okay, so do watch out for the oxygen here. And make sure you include it in when you balance your equation. Twenty-eight. We can have this addition isomer or addition polymer. What we can do is we put two of them side by side. We can visualize the lone, the double bonds as two electrons. I will relocate them later on. So what happens when we polymerize is one half of a bond will be formed here and then the other one will be joined to the other monomer. So same thing, I bring out one electron, the other electron will be on this side. So we have a single bond here and then this one is joined to the other monomers. Most importantly, your new covalent bonds are actually in neighboring carbons. So that will give us C. Okay, the new bonds form and the other single bonds are at the carbons just next to it. Okay. Here the new bonds are formed but the new the other new bond is too far away, too many carbons away already. Oh, same for B. And D, that's actually you require actually a single bond here rather than one carbon atom only. It's actually a single bond joining two carbon atoms.